Hi everyone, we are continuing our active versus passive crossover video series. I think it will be probably a three-part series and uh, I'm doing this as, as a request to give my ideas on specifically on the sublime acoustic crossover which my body is interested in it and uh, and they have a very good uh, write-up on on the benefits of using active crossover and I would like to go through it to discuss this with you because my buddy read it and he said wow this is truly awesome what do I think about it because he knows that I'm a, a huge huge uh, well not believer but a user of uh, explicitly only passive crossovers and if active crossovers are so good then why do I use passive crossovers? So here we go. Let's see why are, what are the things. So here, I try to read it. All speaker systems employ an electronic circuit called a crossover to split the sound into frequency ranges. Uh, so it sends the low frequency sounds to the woofer and high frequency sounds to the tweeter. Uh, I think this is really evident and uh, for those of you who don't know it, basically a crossover is electronics inside a loudspeaker and it makes sure that your woofer, your mid-range and your tweeter, or maybe in this case it will, we will follow a two-way system, in that case a woofer and a tweeter get their respective material to play and if it's a three-way then there's a woofer a mid-range and a tweeter so now uh, we will follow what happens when we have a tweeter and a woofer so here we go this is important because uh, if they don't sound good or even can be damaged if drivers are run outside their proper frequency range and that's absolutely correct and it's mostly applies to the tweeters because if you r make a woofer uh, reproduce a very high frequency sound you just won't hear anything because a large woofer has a large inductance due to its large voice coil and it's just not going to make uh, much noise out of it it's just going to uh, dissipate as heat in the inductance of the voice coil and not turn into cone movement however when you have a tweeter if you force it to reproduce la low frequency sounds which actually require a much longer cone excursion than the high frequency sounds then you have the problem that there's a tiny tweeter let me just get you one so here i show you a nice little vifa dome tweeter and and if you want to play something like a 10 kilohertz note with it then you will be absolutely fine because that that note even if it's very loud it requires very small movement to reproduce but if you allow this driver this tweeter to reproduce let's say a 40 hertz sound the 40 hertz it means that the cone moves only 40 times a second instead of 10,000 times for a 10 kilohertz sound but it has to move like maybe like a, a centimeter forward and back and this tiny driver is not built to move that much it doesn't have that cone excursion so actually it will destroy your tweeter if you let it play very low frequencies and just because it physically cannot handle it ah let's see so these are really significant issues and that's partially why you need a crossover and the other reason is because uh, they just don't like it uh, and they don't produce good sound if you use them at a different frequency that they are built to reproduce so here we go 
Most speaker boxes employ passive crossovers which are made up of large inductors and capacitors that filter the low frequencies from the highs. I have to add that uh, when we talk about large inductors and capacitors, it can mean two things. One of them is large inductance, which means if it, the inductance is large, it's like uh, 10 millihenries or 20 or 100 millihenries, which means like high value inductors. Or a capacitor is a high value capacitor if it's, let's say, like 50 microfarad or 100 microfarad. And that's where we are starting to see problems. If the value is too high, then that uh, element will really modify the sound and have a really big impact on your sound. However, there is also another consideration whether they are physically large which is a huge bonus. So if your inductor is physically large, then it means that it has a low resistance to the sound and behaves more as an inductor. Because the huge problem with these uh, passive parts is not that I am introducing an inductor or a capacitor to the sound, but the problem is when the capacitor is not a perfect capacitor. And it also has inductance and series resistance. And that's the prime cause for why passive crossovers suck, because when you use a capacitor that's not a pure capacitor, but a mixture of a capacitor, inductor, and a, res a resistor, then it will create a network that will color your sound pretty badly. Same is true for inductors. The uh, most, the in the, all of the inductors also have resistance. And when you look at cheap inductors that 99% of loudspeakers use, they have significant resistance. And, and for a woofer, that is a death sentence for the bass. Because uh, the larger the resistance your inductor has, uh, it will make it practically impossible for your amplifier to uh, properly control that cone and to have a good bass response. So there we have it. If your inductors and capacitors are physically large, then that allows them to behave more like they should be. So it means that a physically large inductor behaves more as a perfect inductor rather than a resistor-inductor combo and the physically big capacitor it works better as a capacitor and has less self-inductance and less series resistance than a small size tiny capacitor. Uh, plus when you have the parts very big it means that they are not going to stress out by the signal level that you are running through them because it's very critical that if you are undersizing your parts and you force them to work close to their tolerances they are that's when you are going to get the distortion and that's because in those conditions they are radiating an extreme amount of electromagnetic uh, noise and that also means that they have crosstalk between each other. So we will see that later on. But let's just continue here. Passive crossovers have a number of very significant drawbacks. One big problem with them is that they don't have a very sharp roll off. What this means that some of the best frequency energy will reach the tweeter and some of the treble energy will still reach the woofer. Now I have to really really stop here and uh, this is something uh, that is the current thinking and this is where audio is today and this is the future of audio that when we have a, a tweeter and a woofer then uh, engineers think that uh, for a tweeter 
we need it to reproduce just a specific frequency and for the woofer specific frequency so let me show it let's go to the blackboard so let's see that here we have like our tiny tweeter thing and we have here our big woofer and uh, this is our frequency range let's say here there's 20 hertz and here there's 20 kilohertz and and we want our woofer to fill it up let's say up to 1.5 kilohertz that is uh, quite typical i would say so what we were reading here uh, what what they were talking about is that the crossover's purpose is that when you have these frequencies you have to filter out anything from 1.5 kilohertz to 20 kilohertz and just keep between 20 and 1.5 and your woofer will be very happy and from 1.5 to 20 kilohertz and your tweeter will be very happy and uh, how is that working out now here's the other part of the story so the other part of the story is that if we make a really precise really sharp cut between uh, what frequencies we load to the woofer and what we load to the tweeter that will create uh, yes a very clear a very precise sound but it will sound pretty schizophrenic why is that that is because uh, the woofer here now gets only those frequencies which it can reproduce and it's not burdened by anything above where it doesn't have a good performance so it's like an athlete which is given its uh, task and it can pre perform perfectly and this is all really good and the same is true for the tweeter however if we make a clear cut line between the two it will also mean that each of these frequency ranges will be completely dominated by the characteristics of the tweeter and the characteristic of the woofer so below 1.5 kilohertz you will have one sound and above 1.5 you have a completely different sonic signature so how this loudspeaker will sound with a crossover that creates a perfect cut between them you will have a sound that is uh, similar to let's say a Wilson audio uh, system sound in that way that you will have a really edged uh, 3d high resolution uh, sound and those recordings that were made in a studio will sound uh, like really 3d in it uh, frequency extension will be really audible really extended but uh, and and before the but and it seems that it when you do an a b test you will check all the boxes because it will give you benefits in every area because the drivers are doing uh, uh, a perfect job each of them it's like writing a test and they mark a a in every category however here comes the problem uh, if you uh, well before the problem let's just take one step back so you will be able to tick all of the boxes with a scores if you listen to music that doesn't have harmonic content uh, so for example if you listen to music that is as uh, let's say saxophones trumpets so music instruments that predominantly have high frequencies only and next to nothing or very little or in in this frequency range plus they have no wooden sound that they are a metallic and and sharp sounding so these instruments will sound phenomenally 
engaging and phenomenally high performing and phenomenally detailed uh, or instruments let's say uh, a drum kit where you just have looking for or listening to the impact of the drum you will have a tremendous amount of impact and kick and it will be uh, very uh, fascinating for you it will sound as if the drummer has more power in his arms and he's able to hit the drum skin with greater force when you employ these uh, tactics however uh, if you let's say listen to music that involves a guitar or a violin or a piano you will have an exact opposite experience because these instruments have their tonality spread out across the entire frequency range so it means that when you will be listening to a piano and when the pianist plays the lower four octaves then you will have a certain sound and 1.5 kilohertz that's close to an a6 uh, sound like the sixth octave middle uh, then you cross there and he's uh, playing like the top registers on the piano it will sound like he is using a different piano like we have a pianist and his left hand is playing on a different instrument than the right hand and and those of us who are not used to how pianos sound we will find it truly fascinating because it will have tremendously high resolution and detail and 3D imaging. But if you listen to the tonality, then it, uh, uh, it will be a very uh, naughty experience. And, uh, and, and, and if you are a pianist, you won't be able to stand it. Uh, or if you are a cello player or a violinist, you will just r really dive for the uh, stop button probably um, and why is that and that's because there is a clear cut between the two drivers and and when we have drivers in a loudspeaker they behave as music instruments so think about your tweeter as your violin and think about your woofer as your double bass and if there is a sharp line between the two, it's like we have two different instruments and their voices do not mix. We have two soloists who are not, who are playing next to each other, but they are not playing together. So when you have a crossover where the woofer is allowed to bleed a little bit into the uh, frequency of the tweeter, and the tweeter is allowed to bleed a little bit below the, the cut frequency. So they have this zone. This is the zone where their sounds overlap that allows uh, the mixing of the two. So, so there will not be an abrupt break in the tonality between these uh, two reproductions and you will hear a graduate uh, transition between the two so if you are uh, a classical musician a violinist a guitarist then this is of an utmost consideration to you and uh, and then you are really and truly well advised to have a crossover that allows an overlap between these two units whether it's active or passive but the loudspeaker needed to have good tone um, so let's get back here and I see that our time is up and I need to stop this video and we can continue later on i'm progressing much much slower than i anticipated so this is not turning up as a three-part video but many many more parts i think and uh, thank you for tuning in and i hope it has been useful for uh, many of you 
um, and uh, please like and subscribe and we will look at the other considerations next time bye bye